Empowerment Through Knowledge Publishing and Serena Stone present the Tequila Drinker's Guide to Health and Wellness Radio Hour with your host, author and medical Qigong educator, Serena Stone. Featuring the director of the Universal Healing Tao and author of dozens of books on natural health and longevity, Tao Master Montauk Chia. This show is for all of us who work hard and play hard. Those of us who are willing to try new things to improve their life and those who will not tolerate victimization as an answer to health and wellness issues. And now, the Tequila Drinker's Guide to Health and Wellness, episode number four. This ain't your grandma's Qigong with Tevia Feng. On today's episode, White Tiger Qigong School founder Tevia Feng further demystifies meditation, energy, fitness, martial arts, and medical Qigong. The White Tiger Qigong School works with professional athletes, CEOs, professional dancers, bankers, and people with illnesses. Every type of person, young and old, can use ancient anti-aging secrets to feel great and stay sharp. Today's trivia is from too many websites to name them all. Fact. Tevia Feng is the founder and master instructor of White Tiger Qigong School. Fact. Medical Qigong addresses each organ in your body and teaches you how to bring it to its full health potential, naturally. Fact. Your heart pumps about one million barrels of blood in an average lifetime, enough to fill three super tankers. Fact. If you live to the age of 80, you will have taken well over 600 million breaths into your lungs. Fact. Your liver is the largest glandular organ in your body. Its weight is around 1.36 kilograms or 2.87 pounds. It's the second largest organ besides your skin. Fact. Exactly half of one single kidney is capable of doing the job that is performed by two kidneys together. Fact. 10% of people have an extra tiny spleen next to their regularly sized one, and it is considered normal. Fact. The stomach serves as a first line of defense for your immune system. It contains hydrochloric acid, which helps to kill off bacteria and viruses that may enter with the food you eat. Fact. You have the ability to alter and improve the function of each of these organs using breath, movement, and your mind. Hello and welcome back. So the sound you hear behind me right now is the sound of rain. I'm here in the Dow Garden Dining Hall, uh, just in a beautiful, beautiful hut. And I can see the rain around me. You guys can hear it. It is so beautiful here right now. Now, today's show is uh, with a really interesting man who developed... A, a beautiful, beautiful school of Qigong uh, called White Tiger. And, um, well, I'm not going to ruin it for you. I'm not going to tell you any of the surprises, but this is going to be a really good one, you guys. Tevia Fang began his martial arts Qigong and meditation training at the age of seven. In his mid-twenties, he developed a, a focus and expertise on medical Qigong. Now, we've talked about Qigong before, but some of you are new. Now, he worked in a Qigong clinic in China, treating cancer patients with medical Qigong and teaching medical Qigong exercises. Now, he works with all kinds of people, from athletes, professional dancers, CEOs, investment bankers, yogis, people with dif difficult-to-treat illnesses, and, and a lot more than that. 
So we're going to go right into our interview with Tevia Fung today and say hi, Tevia. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to go right into this. And um, some of our listeners are with us for the first time. So I'm going to ask you to briefly explain what Qigong means and where it came from. And also, is it just for like people who like yoga and incense? <laughs> it's a good question. Qigong, essentially, in a real simple term, is working with energy. But let's look at the word Qigong a little more deeply. So if you look at the Chinese character, it has two lines, uh, several lines that mean gas. Okay? And then inside of that, it has a rice kernel. So if you put together the rice with the gas, you have an alchemical process. This creates qi, sort of combustion, we could say. Okay? Then we take a look at the word gong. Gong in Chinese means work or refined skill. So if we really look at the definition of qigong from Chinese perspective, it's this refined skill of working with energy. Okay, now that sounds a little mysterious, mm -hmm. but uh, most of our listeners are, are pretty open to that one. All right, let's get specific. What is white tiger qigong? Mm -hmm. Well, first I'd like to actually break down the mystery about qigong. And Please, because, because honestly, mm -hmm. that was a very beautiful answer, but, uh, you know, it, it, it sounded a little esoteric, so go ahead. And, and in fact, the type of Qigong I practice, I don't consider esoteric at all. It's actually backed by science now. Okay, now you have everybody's attention, Mr. Tevia. Go on. So that brings me to what white tiger Qigong is. So today we know that the Chinese government has documented over 3,000 kinds of Qigong. 3,000 kinds of Qigong. That's a lot. Yeah. So within those 3,000 kinds, there's every kind you can imagine. There's types of, the first type of Qigong I learned was when I was seven years old, I learned to use my Qi to break through wood. So my master taught me how to use my Yi, which is essentially my intention, focusing my intention with the right movement, with the right body coordination, and with the breath. So in Chinese, they say you're harmonizing the, the spirit, and you're harmonizing the breath, and you're harmonizing the body. Okay. This is really what Qigong is. So when we see those kids mm -hmm. uh, on, on television, like, you know, a seven-year-old breaking wood, that's not fake? You're telling me you did that? Oh, yeah. Well, how it started is I walked into a class. My mother and father, my, first, my father's been doing Qigong since before I was born. Okay. And my mother was a Kundalini yoga teacher. So I, I didn't have the average parents bringing me up. So they brought me into a class and I saw this big Irish guy. They asked him to break through a piece of wood. So he went, bam, hit his hand, barely dented the wood and he really hurt. Ow. <laughs> and they took this little skinny 12 year old girl and they taught her how to use her breath, her intention, focus very, very deeply and intensely taught her the right body mechanics, and put it all in one chop. Oh, my and God. And she cut through it like butter. And she was about half the size of this Irish kid. And I said to my mom and dad, I said, I want to do that. That's cool. So I enrolled, and I started studying uh, that day. And I was completely enthralled into this style of Qigong, of being able to really use my mind with my body and the breath and realizing how potent that is and how powerful that is. So as I was very young, I was really into the martial aspect. And as I got older, you know, I was a, I was a tournament fighter. I, en I enjoyed the rush of uh, martial people. Now, wait a minute. When you say as you got older, does that mean you were a teenager, early 20s? In my early 20s. Okay. And I, I had an injury and I went to my Chinese medicine doctor who told me, he said, Tavia, you're going to live a short life if you don't stop you know, fighting in these competitions. And I said, why? He said, basically, you're kicking in your fight or flight on a weekly basis when you should be doing this just a few times in your life. So you're burning out your adrenal glands and you'll sh significantly shorten your life. So I said, what do you, wh what will I do? You know, and, and that, 
he was teaching medical Qigong. So I started, at that point, I started studying medical Qigong. And after a, a very bad injury where I couldn't walk for six months, I just decided I'm just going to focus on medical Qigong. And that's when I really became immersed in the healing powers of medical Qigong. And it's not esoteric. That's what I want to break down and show people how you can get tangible results immediately from the proper type of medical Qigong. Now, unfortunately, what's portrayed in the West, because they're trying to sell a story or sell a legend, is these people with mystical powers. Are there people with mystical powers? Absolutely. But the average man can learn mm -hmm. how to heal themselves with Qigong. I, I think a lot of us uh, that are been studying Qigong, what seemed mystical when we got into the system and what seems mystical or mystifying now is totally different. Because as you said, there are scientific explanations for most of what's going on. And with quantum physics now becoming a part of the game, there's even more explanations for that which we can't see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And being the type of person that I was, I was really drawn to the very dynamic Qigong. Now, what does that mean? So you have uh, static Qigong and you have dynamic Qigong. So back about 2,000 years ago when they were developing medical Qigong, they were finding that the patients who were getting better were generally doing more dynamic movements. Okay. And the people who were not getting better were doing more static Qigong, such as sitting Qigong. They were spending the majority of their time doing sitting Qigong. Okay. So uh, a guy named Hua Tuo, that was a famous Chinese physician who was the emperor's physician. And he developed the first oldest known dynamic medical Qigong form known as five animals, which is, I just actually taught a 10-day course here and I'll be teaching it three-week course next month on that. Yeah, you had some really happy students. These people, I, I think that from talking to them, actually all of this movement, having to get up, be outside, and then, of course, move, uh, they didn't have to wait till the end of your retreat. They were feeling pretty good by the third day. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because what we're doing is... To put it in a real, in a way that the average Joe can understand is we're doing a deep internal organ massage through dynamic movements. Now these dynamic movements are very precise. They've been developed over thousands of years to be more and more precise. And what I've done with white tiger qigong, you asked me before, what's the difference between white tiger yeah. qigong and regular qigong, is I've merged sports science and modern muscle fascia research and Western anatomy with an ancient practice. So essentially that's what white tiger Qigong is and that's what differentiates it from any other style of Qigong that I've seen. I, I know Master Chi is, just loves it. I mean, he's just, <laughs> when you're in Dell Garden, oh, he sees you, yep, he recognizes that young teacher, yes, sir. <laughs> so, because uh, Master Chi is all about uh, anatomy, physiology, the science. He's trying to explain to people why the techniques, uh, why they work. Okay, so well, you're... Master Chia was a great influence for me because I saw how he was putting together Western science with an ancient practice. Mm -hmm. So he he's developed it really well and he developed it with his system. I thought, why can't I do it with my system? And since I have a very dynamic system that uh, I've worked with a lot of athletes, I know how to speak their language. You know, I'm an athlete myself, so I know exactly what an athlete needs. And I'm, we're looking for maximum peak performance. That's what a, a competitive athlete wants. Right. And so I was looking uh, for ways, because one of the things that, one of the definitions of Qigong that I love the most, there's so many definitions of Qigong. It's a 5,000-year-old science on maximum human potential. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and and I have to agree about 5,000% on that one. Yeah. Okay, all right, wow. Uh, you know what, Th that was so interesting, I forgot to look at my questions. No. <laughs> okay, so I think we've already uh, pretty much addressed that it is not just for people into yoga and incense. A CEO has needs just like an athlete does, a dancer, a mother, 
you're communicating with everybody who has a body and a brain, basically. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's look at different people. So we, I worked with ballerinas who suffered a lot of injuries. Now, why do they have injuries? Because they're overusing their body in different ways. And what do we need to do? We need to balance out their fascia. What is fascia? Fascia is a new science of the body that's proven that we're made up of a web of connective tissue. This connective tissue runs throughout the body. So every part of your body is basically connected in some way, shape, or form from your toe up to your fingertips. Okay? And what they found, a guy named Thomas Myers wrote a really good book called Anatomy Trains where he dissected dead bodies and found that these muscle connective tissue lines matched Chinese meridians. So from the Chinese meridian maps of Chinese medicine. Now, he knew nothing about Chinese medicine or Chinese meridians before uh, looking at the maps. But after finding it, he, he decided to compare it. And lo and behold, it was almost identical to the Chinese meridians. So we know that these tissues, when they're coiled and uncoiled, they can generate an electrical charge. Now, my master said to me, he said, tension to relaxation, tension to relaxation. This is generating qi. Okay. Well, he didn't know how to explain it in a, in a Western way and what, with Western science. So when I found this, I said, that's it. That's how I can really see how to explain it and see on a tangible level of what's actually happening. So they found that when you coil and uncoil the muscle fascia lines, that it generates an electrical charge that can be measured with scientific instruments. So in, in our Qigong, in White Tiger Qigong system, all of our dynamic Qigong is coiling and uncoiling the body, tension to relaxation, in these really intelligently designed movements that even really impress me. And I've looked at all different types of movements from yoga to ballet to Pilates to all the different types of modern uh, dance and movements to try to compare and see what they're doing. And I find this Qigong is, is, is brilliant. It is. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Okay, listeners, what he said. Um, anybody who's worked with me knows that I'm the, uh, the fascia banana. I'm, I'm crazy uh, about people understanding the importance of the different layers of fascia in the body. And Tevia, I think, actually just explained it even, even more beautifully than, than I ever have, for sure. Um, folks, uh, ladies out there, if you want to know if you've got fascia issues, look at your thighs. Okay? <laughs> if it looks like cottage cheese... There's, there's something going on there. Okay, guys, we're going to go into the next question for Tevia. And again, I keep forgetting to ask him because I'm actually listening. Uh, this is really cool. All right, so this is clearly more than just Qigong, what you're, what you're doing. Now, I'm, I think what Master Chia is teaching also gets a little outside of Qigong into different areas of manifestation. Um, why don't you talk to us? Let, let's get into some specifics. This is more than just Qigong. Um, we had a conversation before I turned on the microphone, for example, about the different kinds. I, I said, well, in our system, we have sitting, standing, and moving Qigong. And you, you were using terminology I wasn't familiar with. You actually were, your, your, your system is so uh, refined that you even, for people that don't know how to focus, mm -hmm. have practices. It's not actually Qigong yet. Mm -hmm from what you, I understood, mm -hmm. you actually can deal with anybody. If, they're, if I can't focus, if I'm a CEO and, you know, we don't sleep as a CEO, mm -hmm. right? Um, you actually have a practice just to help us become, I don't know, more self-aware or yeah. be able to do Qigong? Yes. Well, take, for example, I've worked with in, uh, high-level investment bankers and even hedge fund managers who Ouch. are managing <laughs> a lot of money. Now, what happens with these types of folks is that they need very high levels of concentration and they, be, they need to be able to make non-emotional judgment calls. Right. So what happens in the body on a physiological level when we're going through stress, okay? What happens is the body tightens. And if we look at from the Chinese medicine perspective, it tightens around specific organs. Let's say take worry, for example, you're worried. That's going to tighten around the spleen area. Now, around the spleen that we know from muscle fascia research that we call this the visceral fascia. So your organs are essentially encapsulated by a bag of fascia. Now, that fascia is then connected to the other connective tissue that runs into the extremities. So 
Say, for example, you're at your desk and you're going through a lot of worry, worry about a decision. Okay? That's going to now contract around your spleen. What does the spleen relate to in Chinese medicine? Digestion. Okay? So that's going to cause you possibly indigestion from worrying too much. Now, what's happening is you're at a desk, you're sitting in a forward position. So your, your organs are already in a compressed position. So if you don't circulate the energy, circulate blood, get good circulation to that area, it's going to exacerbate. So it's yeah. going to be like a snowball effect. And what happens is we know that the fascia then pulls on the extremities, which creates structural imbalances. And what happens when we have pain and tension in the body? We can't concentrate. Right. And one of the ancient practices of medical Qigong that, that I really resonate with is if the body cannot relax, the spirit cannot relax. Now, if the spirit cannot relax, the body cannot relax. What is the spirit? I mean, without being too uh, esoteric and neo-spiritual, the spirit really is essentially, we, let's put it in a simple way, it's, it's your consciousness, your awareness, and that, that you know that you exist inside your body. You're completely aware of your body and you feel it. So we know that our awareness is intrinsically connected to our physical body. So in or if we want to really be able to concentrate, we have to be able to relax the body. How do you relax the body? Well, it takes a lot of tension and relaxation, tension to relaxation. We know from modern muscle relaxation techniques, you can take your fist and you squeeze it and then you relax. And then you squeeze another part of your body and you relax. And you do this with a breath and this is used in, in modern meditation techniques that are taught in different corporations around the world. We take that to a whole nother level. What we do is we wind up the fascia. For example, if you twist your arm, rotate it, and then you unwind it and rotate it the other way, you're creating this tension to relaxation to tension to relaxation. Now that's going to unwind that area. Now if we twist the waist one way and twist the waist another way, and if we had it, hit it at a, a, an angle that goes in a downward motion with a twist, we can then compress the spleen. And when we say compress the spleen, we're not actually compressing the spleen itself. We're compressing the visceral mm -hmm. fascia that surrounds the spleen, which will then help squeeze out the toxins. And we know that from Chinese medicine that emotions are directly connected to the organs. And now modern muscle fascia research has proven that the emotions are stored inside the muscle yeah. fascia. This is now a proven scientific fact. Okay, you heard it, guys. We're, we're not crazy here. <laughs> your body does retain emotion. Yep. I don't mean just your brain. I mean the body. And the, the body is made up of what? 70% water. That's, mm -hmm. that's what they say. Mm -hmm. okay? So we look at the fascia and the organs like a sponge. Every day you brush your teeth. You Hopefully you brush your teeth. You <laughs> take a shower, at least most of you. And, but how many of you actually clean your insides? And that's what this medical Qigong does. That's what white tiger Qigong does, is it's wringing out the organs like a sponge. So you're wringing out the toxins and the emotions, the toxic emotions that are sitting in your body and festering and squeezing them out on a daily basis. Now, what happens if you don't? So say you're in that office and you're going through worry and you're going through emotions and you're not doing anything about it. You keep working. Okay, that's going to disrupt your emotional state. It's going to disrupt your spiritual state. And what's going to happen eventually, it becomes a structural imbalance. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes deeper, you're going to block circulation to that organ. And what happens then when our immune system starts to uh, decrease in its function and people develop cancer. There's a lot of people working really hard out there to make money, but they're not taking care of their body. They're not taking care of themselves. And when I speak of the body, I speak from the medical Taoist Qigong perspective, which is the body and the spirit. And that's your, your let's call it your well-being. Mm -hmm. So they're not taking care of your well-being. You've made all that money, but then you've got to spend it all on medical bills or you spend all your time in a hospital. So even you've got all the money in the world, it's useless if you're in a hospital bed, right? Or constantly at a doctor's office. Yeah, when, when people say, oh my gosh, those classes are so expensive. I say, yeah, but not as expensive as going to the hospital and missing work. <laughs> mm, call <laughs> when, this preventative care. For sure. All right. Um, well, he's got my attention. 
uh, I think a lot of you guys uh, resonate with some of the things that he's been saying, and it doesn't really matter if you're a corporate person, uh, a stay-at-home dad, a stay-at-home mom. Stress is stress, and if it builds up, we get sick. And a lot of the, we've been talking a lot about that kind of stuff on this show. All right. Now, as you know, Master Chia is the developer of Universal Healing Dao System, and he's made the formulas his master taught him available to everyone. Uh, can you explain how or why we have so many forms? And are you guys competing with each other? Well, I would say we're definitely not competing with each other. We're teaching a very different style of Qigong. And that's the beauty of Qigong. And that's what I love is you have a million different flavors. So, I, for example, I studied with three different masters. And they all studied under the same master, but they all taught completely different. Their Qigong all looked different, and the way they taught it was different. Okay, Master Chia says, for every speaker, there's a listener. So teach your own way, and it will be fine. The way it was taught to me is that first you learn the principles of that system. Once you understand the principles and can yes. truly embody those principles, and that, that, that means not just being able to speak the theory, but actually true, a true body of knowledge so you can express it physically, you can see it in your mo movements, then you can then add your own style and flavor to that. You'll understand that. If you try to add your own style and flavor before that process, you, you're really creating something else. So, so what, is, what separates you know, white tiger qigong from exercise? So, I mean, I consider uh, white tiger qigong a type of exercise, but it's an exercise for this for the body, mind, and breath. And when we harmonize the body, mind, and breath, now I'm supplementing the word mind for spirit. Okay. okay. So when we harmonize these three things with together, that is really what makes qigong qigong and separates and differentiates from exercise. Also, another big difference is when an athlete is in a competitive sport, they're driving themselves to their maximum. What happens when you drive yourself to your maximum? You can burn out. Okay. So what we do is we stop before we get fatigued. We don't want to fatigue ourselves. We always keep a little bit of reserve energy. And then we finish by bringing that energy and calming ourselves and breathing deep and focusing in our lower abdomen area and focusing all that circulation and energy there and finish and, and put it back there. Because that lower abdomen area, what we call as the Dantian, but it's just simply the, the place where absorption, digestion, and elimination all happen in that area. And where we focus our intention, there's a good book called The Power of Intention. Mm -hmm. And we've discovered that where we focus our intention, we can create, we can bring circulation to that area. So I can focus on my hands and feet and breathe. And within five minutes, I can make them hot and sweaty. Now, is that magic? No. No. It's just I know how to concentrate very intensely, and I know how to breathe and match my concentration with the breath. And when you know these simple techniques, if you just practice it repetitively, repetitively, as we said, Qigong is the refined, you know, mm -hmm. skill. So, or that, as Master Chia says, I tell you, when you get it, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it might take you a while. <laughs> So worth it, though. And then it's, I tell people, just mm -hmm. once you've mastered a skill, mm -hmm. just put it in your imaginary medicine bag and you'll know when to use it. Yep. And if we have our daily stuff for upkeep, but then we have little special pieces of medicine. And I think you're absolutely right. If somebody was to become aware that a system of their, first of all, you have to be aware yeah. that a system of the body is going down. You had mentioned digestion. Mm -hmm. Okay. If a person is aware their digestion is down and mm -hmm. they had medicine, meaning an exercise, mm -hmm. a white tiger kind mm -hmm. of Qigong exercise, mm -hmm. just do it. Yeah. And it, it works. Yep, absolutely. Well, I mean, think of all the people suffering now from digestion problems. That's one of the big things that's plaguing modern society right now. Huge. And if we know the right exercises, the right motions, how to really squeeze out the intestines, you'll be able to squeeze all that to those toxins that are sitting there and, and festering and be able to make room and then you'll improve your digestion because you're releasing all the toxins and then you're making room and space for the new nutrition to come in and be absorbed. And because your circulation then is now flowing to a higher level, 
your blood now can circulate throughout your body and feed all the organs and feed the rest of your body. So you, you feel good. The end result of this all, I mean, people say, why do you do Qigong? Well, the end result is I feel really damn good. I feel really good in my body. I have a lot of energy. Uh, I have very good focus. And I love it. It makes me feel so good. I feel good in my body. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question that wasn't in the list that I gave you, but it, I, but you're going to be able to answer this so easy. Can we talk for a second to our, our listeners that are not aware of their body? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm, I'm an American, mm -hmm. and uh, it's pretty common if I go to New York. Actually, I was just in Australia. I had the same experience. You, I try to talk, if I, if I talk too deeply about um, how I feel or ask them too deeply about how they feel, I mean physically yeah. feel, there's not a whole lot of connection there, number one. Number two, we are all, uh, our media tells us that having pain is normal. Mm -hmm. Being swollen is n normal. Everybody is. Mm -hmm. So what do we have to say for people who might have an idea that maybe... They're not feeling so great, but this is normal, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, it's becoming normal in the sedentary lifestyles that we're living in. I mean, nowadays we have cars, we have buses, which, you know, it's all great things for transportation-wise, but the effect that it takes on the body is, is we're living in a completely different time. We don't walk anywhere anymore. We don't uh, move our body much. We're going from our desk to our couch. Right. And that's about it. the most movement we get is uh, walking to the car, walking to the bus to, to get to that point. And that's actually the sad reality for many people nowadays. So what's happening is, I again, go back to the fascia explanation. Look at your body like a wetsuit. A wetsuit. You know a wetsuit? It's, it, it's, it's malleable, but as... So your body, you're wearing a wetsuit, essentially. And <clears throat> if you don't move that, it starts to harden. Okay. You lose range of motion. And gradually, over many years, this elasticity loses its function and becomes more plastic and hardening. And you end up reaching the age of, say, 50 or 60, and you can barely move, or you have a very difficult time moving, mm -hmm. and you realize all of a sudden you've built a prison. You've built a prison for your own body. And now you're going to have to sit with that for the next 20 or 30 years that you have left on the earth. One thing I've noticed about the masters that I've trained with, they have incredible range of motion. And they're incredibly comfortable in their body and very body aware. Now, is it too late at 30 or 40 or 50 years old to start doing this? That is... Absolutely not. Okay, it's guys. It's never too late until you hit the grave. <laughs> Only then it's too late. And I've told some of my students, I'll be with you by your bed on your last breath. And that's when... That's when we, we stop. <laughs> okay, so what could... Let's talk to the guys for a minute. How does a guy know that his body is starting to slip? Because we don't have this education all around us, Tevye. So consistent aches and pains. That, that's a sign. You know, That's the body trying to tell you, hey, something's wrong. Pay attention to me. But most people, we, we get the aches and pains and we take a pop of pill exactly. to ignore it, which exacerbates the problem and then we bring in a whole new set of problems <laughs> and um, yeah so people aren't paying attention to the signals that their body is giving them okay so aches and pains are one um give me one more for the guys and let's then let's talk about what women should look for how do we know we should probably ch at least check into qigong i mean i've had a lot of men come to me with sexual dysfunction that's a good one because they're losing very important circulation in the areas that they need to. Okay, where is sexual function connected to? Kidneys. Yeah. So, and we know, I, I'm always looking at anatomy maps all the time. You have these, these uh, connections directly from the testicles to the kidneys. Okay. Yep. And these... We look at the body like you're made up of wires, headphone wires. If you're not untangling the wires on a daily basis, those wires start to get tangled and they're not pumping right. So you're not getting the proper circulation to the sexual organs to give you the kind of sexual function that you need. And you think something's wrong with you, so you pop a, uh, what do you call it, Cialis or Viagra? Viagra, that's Viagra. the big one. 
and uh, then you're inviting a whole new set of problems on, and you're not actually getting to the root of the problem. Okay, so that's a really big, uh, that's, that's a very easy to notice issue. All right, guys, so you, you heard that. Uh, how about for the ladies? How do we know we are losing touch with ourselves and our body is falling apart? I mean, is there a symptom? Hmm. Well, a lot of women now that have come to me, they're suffering from uh, joint pain. Particularly. Oh yeah, for sure. A lot, a lot of people with joint pain, and this is a for sure sign that something needs to be done. And the prescription really is the right kind of movement that was designed to heal the body. So some people just start turning to running now as a way to, like, say, for example, lose weight or something like that. Now running is great. I think it's a great sport. I'm a runner myself. I love it, but it. It's not your end all, and that it, it, you need something that's specifically designed to move your body in the proper range of motion and different various ranges of motion and on different planes. Okay, so instead of running, we might want to do qigong and running. Right, exactly. So the or to qigong to prep for running. Oh, I'm actually working on a book uh, 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 about running in Qigong right now as we speak. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to hit one more for the ladies because this is what I see from, from my clients. This weight gain, and they think it's fat yeah. and it's water. Yeah. Well, as, as we uh, spoke about before, the body is made up mostly of water. Now, when we squeeze out the organs and squeeze out the meridians, or we should we could say in a Western way, the connective tissue lines, we're, we're squeezing out all the toxins and also we're inducing sweats with the Qigong. We're, you're going to perspire with this type, with white tiger Qigong. And that's the way Hua Tuo, who was the creator of one of the Qigong forms that we teach, uh, he said you should be perspiring when you're doing your Qigong to sweat out the toxins that in combination with the squeezing out of the organs. Now that's from my perspective. Uh, and then you'll be able to absorb water better and also flush it through the body more easily. I think there's a lot of stagnation in people. Stagnation comes from, like I said before, sedentary lifestyles and things of this nature. Now, I will say with white tiger Qigong, you'll get a six pack <laughs> because it's super hard on the core, intense on the core gives you a true deep core workout. You know, I have- Wait, wait, even women? Yeah, women even, are gonna even, get abs? Well, it's not gonna be like, like a defined like ripple, but it will be hard and solid and strong. Okay, girls, come on, come on. We all know we want that. <laughs> and if we don't have to constantly, you know, hit the gym to, to attain that, if, if this is something that we could learn by coming to class and then keep it in our lives, uh, that's, that's phenomenal. We, I don't do any crunches at all. None, no sit-ups, nothing. And I've been able to maintain an extremely strong core, really strong stomach, uh, that looks much better than these guys who spend hours and hours and hours a week working on their abs. All right. Now look, uh, we could talk to Tevia forever, but I just realized that we've actually run out of time. So I think we should do another podcast and discuss what it looks like to study with you on an ongoing basis. So people can get a foundation. I mean, this is, you know, this is really important stuff that you're doing, Tevia. We, we need our, our, our men and women out there in touch with their bodies, in touch with their minds, so that we can, instead of focusing on what's negative all the time, which is what happens in, you know, right? When, yeah. when we're constantly in pain or we hate the way we look, we hate the way we feel, we're not generating beautiful things out there for, you know, in our community. So I think Tevia's work is profound i think it's needed and i don't know if we'll have him back next week but i think we should definitely have him back um yeah because there's a lot more questions that i wanted to ask uh, tell you just tell people tell our listeners how do they find you uh, you go to www.white tiger qigong now i spell qigong q i g o n g so white tiger q i g o n g and uh we have facebook we got twitter uh, Instagram, the whole nine. Uh, so there's plenty of ways to get in touch with the White Tiger crew. Wonderful. All right, you heard it right here, guys. 
I highly recommend it. I mean, I'm in Qigong and I forgot to ask questions because I was listening to what this guy had to say. And I wanted to mention one more time that this is also uh, somebody that Master Chia advocates. I definitely speak on behalf of Universal Healing Dao. Um, we work together. Uh, Tevia brings things into our system. Our system is listening to what Tevia brings to the table. We're a family, okay? We're, we're, we all really advocate each other. And uh, we're going to advocate White Tiger Qigong right now. So get in touch with Tevia, and um, hopefully we have him back again. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you for joining us on another Empowerment Through Knowledge adventure. Want to learn more? Find Master Chia at MontauKchia.com. That's M-A-N-T-A-K-C-H-I-A dot com. Find advanced learning materials, books, and more at SerenaStone.com. That's S-A-R-I-N-A-S. T-O-N-E dot com. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe today. This podcast was produced by J.C. Warfield Productions in conjunction with the Echo Chamber Studio, Minneapolis, Minnesota.